Yo, what's up fam? It's your girl Tylea. I'm just coming at you because I don't know if you've ever heard about Anchor, but it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. They even allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or from your computer using the app. Plus, they even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on various platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You can even make money with no minimum amount of listeners. Guys, look, this is a great opportunity, right? Everything we need to make a podcast is conveniently right in one place. Again, for free. So you can go download the free app or just go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M. And if it's calling out to you, look, I'm here to tell you right now, hop on it, okay? Well, I hope you enjoy this next episode, and I'm sending you so much peace and love. Take care. Hello, friends and family. Welcome to Down With The Earth Podcast where we unpack and discover insight and lessons from the universe through storytelling, as well as share intimate thoughts about ourselves, our connection to spirit, and our journey of holistic transformation, leading us towards a life of well-being, enlightenment, alignment, joy, and fulfillment. Let's get started. Today's the last day of Black History Month, and the first two months of 2023 were not easy for me. <clears throat> and it makes me feel better that I'm really not the only one. For some reason, this winter has been like extra wintry. And by that, I just mean very transformative. Um, A lot of growing pains, a lot. I'm knowing that there's going to be so much, like so much great change is on the horizon. And I don't know if I could have avoided this part at all. I think that's just what my mind tries to cope with because I'm a control freak. (laughs) But I don't think so. I think that one constant in life is that it is going to be a very difficult journey. Especially when we're trying to reach ultimate and absolute freedom. It's a struggle to be free. But I had a meltdown today because I was finishing the last tiny little bit of my taxes. And... I wrote down some information um, that I just misplaced something and that sent me like off the hinges because I have a small room. It's not even small um, like that, but just saying all of that to say like, I feel like I shouldn't have lost that paper. Um, there's that slight possibility that I threw it away after I was done using it, but I was pretty sure that I took a picture of it. At least I can't find a picture of it, a digital copy. I don't know where that paper went. And it was some information that I needed to copy onto my tax return or like my tax documents. So, you know, 
I just went through a bunch of st- like I fought a lot of obstacles to get that work done and I didn't complain there have been a lot of little tiny inconveniences lately that I have not complained about I mean yes I have like said my piece about it or just like felt it and been like that's fucking irritating and I might have like said a little thing or even vented to my sister about it but honestly I did not give myself the space to like even journal to God about it or be really really upset about certain things because it's just like I know God's good I know my life is good so sometimes being caught up on like little tiny shit because lately it's been a lot of little tiny shit so it's like I know I can go to God about anything like me and God I'm I'm talking to God or I'm talking like you know in my head I'm like making dialogue like all the time I'm always you know noticing the messages from the universe I'm always just like trying to stay aligned as best as I can so being in alignment to me knowing is knowing to not get attached to certain things like none of that shit I want to attach to like those minor shit is just like literally there's gonna be minor shit all the time but you know I say minor because to me major is death and I've I haven't experienced death so I feel like anything else is minor um but I guess my inner child feels like it was major especially somebody almost breaking into my car and breaking the fucking my lock on my door and I feel like instead of leaning into how annoyed and how irritated and how upset I could be I almost immediate not even almost immediately because I it's not always immediate but I don't spend a lot of time in my complaining mind I allow those thoughts to come I release those thoughts as far as I know they were released but spirit taught me something different today that you know I have let a lot of those thoughts go because of how blessed I am because of how grateful I am but my inner child is really bothered about certain things that I need to give her the space to be annoyed about and you know like allow myself to fully let those emotions go I guess because I feel like I have in a way and I have even vocalized how yes this is so irritating but because I can still get into my car and still lock my car and my whole car is there like literally affirming and being grateful for the things that I do have and trying my best not to stay um in touch with the negative emotions it's like I'm okay with negative emotions I'm okay with having negative emotions but I don't like to spend too much time in negativity I really don't so sometimes I get frustrated with myself when I feel like okay bitch I gave you enough time to be to complain about that like get over it because literally life is good and I just I like feeling good from the inside out mentally emotionally spiritually I like to feel good so I guess again I see how I might have bypassed some things but honestly I just feel like it was a lesson and an experience for me to realize that like I still hate myself in a way or not that sinister or that dark but a lot of those dark ass negative thoughts that I used to think when I was a child when I wanted to die when I just didn't want to live when I really truly felt those emotions and coped by repeating those thoughts in my head because I couldn't do anything else I couldn't get out of that house where I was living at the time when I was having those thoughts or when I attempted suicide like I couldn't go anywhere I was under 18 I had to stay in my grandma's house so I literally coped 
just affirming negative ass thoughts I don't know why those soothed me it was almost like being a sad girl you know like I embodied that energy of like emo and just depressed and you know listen to sad music and being sad and it's just like I feel like my my, part of me is just like I spent like I wasted time there or you know like just damn that was so sad like I'm not wasting any more time there anymore because I'm like that was really fucking sad like if my little self could see how I am today she would be so surprised because literally everything I have I've given to myself I tried um I'm not saying that nobody has held me because it took a try for me to get to even the the space that I am now like I've made mistakes I've fallen I've like I was not perfect so it's been a rough journey and there were people to pick me back up there were times where I didn't have anybody to pick me up but most of the time I literally had people to there to help me so it's not that nobody has helped me it's really just that I fought for my freedom even being an entrepreneur, I fought to be validated as an entrepreneur, be validated as somebody who was capable of even doing this and creating what I've created and what I am creating currently because people told me I couldn't do it and people said it was dumb and people didn't believe and still to this day I feel like people in my circle don't believe in me, don't think that I'm doing anything and don't see the results so they're kind of just like well she's not doing anything probably just smoking her life away but in reality it just took so much to not only be comfortable being an entrepreneur but also it took so much to like fight my inner child (laughs) and in a way that I wasn't like fighting against her but I was reprogramming her or like raising her it feels like I was raising myself all this time and like being a mother to myself giving myself what I did not receive I literally did not receive mothering like emotional nurturing I did not receive that And I'm doing my best to do that today and be an adult to myself, but also be a mother to myself and be my own father too. Because I didn't receive good fathering either. And I love my parents so much. I forgive them. I know that they did not want me to struggle the way that I'm struggling. I know that wasn't their intention. It wasn't. I'm sure their intention was to be as good of a parent as they could be. But you can't be good. Or it's it's even harder to be good when you haven't been taught that. It's... It's hard when you don't have a mentor, when you don't have a leader, and when you don't have an example. And that's why I can let go of what I wanted. And that was like a mom and a dad. And I did not realize how hard it would be to grow up without good mothering and fathering skills and I just mean that to say I didn't know how hard it was to be an adult when you did not have a good 
you did not have good examples of what good adults were. I think I took the good out of the bad that I had. And I don't want to label my parents as bad because literally I could be so much worse. I really could. And I know that other people have received so much worse. But this is just my experience and my story. I did not. I had such a toxic family environment. And that literally shaped me. And I should be so much worse than who I am today. I literally was good. I knew. I knew what. I didn't want to be. And thank God that I didn't allow myself to become that fully. (sighs) It's hard. And if you're out there and you're struggling, I'm so sorry. If you are struggling because you had a really bad You had a really bad experience and family upbringing and you just don't know how to get it together fully as an adult because of that. I am so sorry. I see you. I hear you. I know your struggle and I'm sending you so much love. Like pure love. Pure love and joy. I really pray that you're able to accept what you've been given. I really pray you're able to not only accept it, but transmute it into higher vibrations because that's what we deserve. And that's what I don't even like saying deserve because I feel like sometimes people who aren't worthy or don't deserve, I love when people get things that they feel like they're unworthy of receiving. But to me, it's even worse or it's even more sad when the people who do deserve good and who do deserve and who are really worthy of amazing things don't get what they deserve. But... It's 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 going to be a journey for us. Um, I'm 28 years old and I got taken away from my mom when I was four. I didn't know how much that was going to disrupt me and my life. I've always had a really, really deep, deep connection with God. I feel like I can't. I knew who I was because I feel like I was an alien. Like, my family was so toxic. I just knew I didn't come from them in a way. I feel like I knew my divinity at a very young age. And I knew that I wasn't that I wasn't toxic I wasn't like even though literally they they taught me all the toxicity that I am now as an adult but I'm not as bad as them I promise like I feel like people might see my toxicity levels and think of them as very bad or extreme but Compared to compared to what my family was, I wasn't anything close to that. And I'm not perfect still. I'm still unlearning a lot of things. But... I just, 
has a black woman need to say on the last day of Black History Month? That it is so hard. And me saying that my experience is challenging is in no way disregarding someone else's challenge or um, uh, minimizing or diminishing anyone else's challenge. But I, I want to get used to sharing my story because I know there are so many people out there that do what I do, that just eat it up, that just don't say anything, you know, you probably just survive day to day and you don't ever give yourself the space to complain or say it's hard. Um, I'm sure for many really, really dope reasons, but a big reason for me is that I know people have it worse. Like, I truly know that, and it's so hard for me to really sit here and complain about my life when I literally have a home to sleep in and I know people are homeless on the street. I can't always fix my mouth up to complain about little shit, but... As a human, as someone who is actively healing themselves and their inner child, it is healthy to voice your complaints in a healthy space. <sighs> Please get used to sharing your story, even if it sounds like a complaint. If you feel like it's complaining, journal. You can do this that like I'm doing start a podcast and like talk about your life that's what I've done and don't give up I've been getting so triggered lately by those words don't give up it's been making me so angry because of course you get a lot of those messages and those signs when it's the heart like when you're literally at your boiling point and when you're about to quit entrepreneurship has been such a journey that regardless of whether or not it works out for me my biggest fear is that it won't work um but i mean i i, I don't even know how that's that could happen because even if I did fail at it, I would keep doing it. Somehow, in some capacity, in some way, I would continue doing the things that I am doing. I'm known for doing the things that I'm doing already, so it's kind of hard for me not to or to like, you know, step away from it completely if people know you as an artist and as an entrepreneur. But I do know it's going to work and that's why it's been triggering of me not giving up because I want in a way, you know, to be rescued, not by any one man, woman, but literally by spirit. I be asking Jesus to rescue me on a daily basis because I feel like I've had it hard already and that sounds like a complaint. That sounds like I don't want to fix my mouth up to say that. But I really had to sit with myself today and be like, it's okay if I feel that way because it's true. Like, I didn't have a mom or a dad at four years old. I lived with my grandma, thank God. And even some of my brothers and my sisters have had it worse, I think. Because, well, I mean... Being with a parent that you actually know versus being with a foster parent that don't give a fuck about you, that will literally treat you like shit, I think is worse than being with a grandma who was just really bad at <laughs> disciplining in a healthy way and didn't have good communication skills and just like projected a lot of negativity. To me, like it's really easy for me to diminish my own experience and that's scary. 
Like, I don't know why I want to diminish my experience so bad and say it was nothing. And that's literally what I've done since the beginning of this year. All of the little inconveniences, all of the little dumb shit, all of the things that I really want to cry or like take a tantrum about, I've been eating up because I'm just like, people have it worse, girl. And that's not healthy, you know? It's not healthy. It's okay for me to say what I want to feel. I ain't putting that shit all over Twitter. I'm not writing like long ass captions in my stories or whatever. Like I'm not putting that shit all over the internet. I'm not seeking anything from anybody. I'm not get trying to get a pat on the back from anybody. I'm not trying to get like, you know, attention. It's literally... <laughs> It's just literally my experience, my feeling, my internal world. I'm used to being very, very expressive and not caring about who sees my expression or who's bothered by my expression. But lately, as an adult, I've been so like resistant towards that and like diminishing myself over and over and over again. And it stops here at the last day of Black History Month. Because I can't diminish myself anymore. I can't diminish my story. I can't just say that things don't hurt or bother me when they really do. I'm never bothered by someone who is telling me that something bothers them, even if it's petty. They have the courage and the bravery to even say what bothers them. Most of us do not have that. Most of us will not say what bothers us because we feel like it's petty. But I'm just giving myself a lot more permission. I'm giving myself a lot more grace. I'm leaning way more into deeper, deeper, deeper self-intimacy. I've been on a self-love, self-care journey for damn near 10 years. I feel like my self-love journey started after I left my house in 2020 or in 2012 and you know I lost myself in a relationship with someone but well not really yes and no like that just affected me on a deep ass level which in turn led me deep deep into self-love which started like started a bigger transformation because of like me being aware of my wounds and being an adult and being like, oh, fuck no. I'm not about to be out here being this kind of adult that I literally wasted or not even wasted that I spent all my time like saying that I wasn't. I wasn't this person. I wasn't not even a person. I was not this energy. I was not that person. I knew who I was. So I was becoming someone I wasn't. And literally I got whoop just stir back onto my path and you know this <laughs> reminds me of that lyric in thick by beyonce when she's like he thought he was loving me good i told him go harder she thought she was killing that shit i told her go harder it's like that's what i'm telling myself like you thought you loved yourself bitch go harder you thought you was killing that shit go harder and that's what 2023 has been for me of like, you thought she was loving yourself, go harder. And I'm okay with it. I feel like I deserve it. There's nothing that I haven't given myself before or I've even hesitated to give myself because of my past. So a bitch is going to get everything she deserves a bitch is going to give herself everything that she wants and needs. Needs first. But not never neglecting the wants, okay? Anyway, this might be a shorter one, which is shocking because when I'm in a great mood, I guess I ramble so much and I feel like I definitely said a lot in this. Like, I feel like it was heavy. So if you're listening to this, I'm really sorry if it was so heavy. 
I'm going to give a disclaimer in the beginning just to say that this is a heavier topic and that if you don't want to take on this type of energy, then that's okay. But definitely cleanse yourself after if you're listening and continuously cleanse your cleanse yourself and your aura and we're attaching to so many energies when we go out every single day and we have to come back to self come back to the divinity within come back to the pure clear light that we are and that's just what this definitely has led me to um I don't like having breakdowns often if I'm crying or if I'm overwhelmed by something I would want to be overwhelmed with joy but today I definitely let myself be there and I can't wait for future me who gets to look back on this part and be like damn I knew it was gonna get good right after that because I literally know that's what future me is saying even inner child me is just so fucking proud and literally will be telling myself not to give myself so much like grief over this and not to be so critical even my sister told me that like do not be critical of yourself like you overreacted or anything because that was one of the things that I felt for sure that I overreacted but and I thought dude how am I gonna get married and how is someone going to be able to deal with that because That literally feels crazy. You know, it feels very mentally unstable. It feels like you need to be locked up. What's wrong with you? But just like how my sister is really able to empathize with me, give me space and love and encouragement and understanding, I know that another, you know, male partner, my even a female or trans or any partner, any my person will be able to handle it and no shade person but I'm not in even in a rush for that either because I remember when I really 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 wanted to find my person and I just feel like God has been my person and that sounds so like cheesy or corny but everything I've accomplished everything that I've done Everything that I've been, like, given and blessed with, like, I literally owe to the divine. I owe to the divine and the divine and divinity within others who gave to me. I salute the divinity within those people. I'm so grateful. And I can't wait to give back in the way that I see fit but I always definitely try my best to give back and show love regardless but yeah it was a little bit of a tough day it's been a couple a tough couple of months um but the spring equinox is upon us and I know it's about to be a transformational year I know we about to launch it's literally gonna be like a big launch because this has been a little bit of a tough transformational season and if you again have been going through it I literally see hear and feel you sending you so much love peace and protection prosperity and it does sound so cliche but Do your best and try not to give up. Even if you do have to, you know, if 1% is your best, that's your best for the day. And if you want to give up temporarily, just make sure it's temporarily. And don't ever, ever permanently give up on a dream or a vision that you have that you know has been placed in you by the divine. So I'm going to stop there and (laughs) I trust that I'll be back for some pleasant um, podcast energy and again, sending y'all so much love.
and hopefully I'll be able to share my story deeper deeper or more in depth but you know just it's it's a heavy story I don't need to go too into detail but those details are pretty much clear enough so thank you thank you thank you thank you if you have listened and thank you for being here if you're here and we're experiencing each other and we've crossed paths if we've connected thank you for sharing with me and choosing and I hope you find people who choose you and share with you too that makes you feel so 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 grateful for living love you all